How far is the river? Written by Ruskin Bond in 7th Standard English. Between the boy and the river stood a mountain. The boy was young and the river was small. But the mountain was big. The thickly forested mountain hit the river. But the boy knew it was the He had never seen the river with his own eyes. But from the villagers he had heard of it. Of the fish in its waters and of its rocks. He wished to touch the water and know it personally. He stood in front of his house on the hill opposite the mountain and gazed across the valley dreaming of the river. He was about 12 year old, a sturdy boy with untidy black hair and shining black eyes. He had fine features and a clear brown skin. But his hands and feet were rough and scratched. He was barefooted not because he couldn't afford shoes but because he liked the feel of warm stones and cool grass. It was 11 of clock and he knew his parents wouldn't return home till the evening. There was a loaf of bread he could take with him and on the way he might find some fruits. Here was the opportunity he had waited for. His mother and father had gone to visit relatives for the entire day and had left him on his own. If he came home before dark, before they returned, they would know where he had gone. He went into the house and wrapped the loaf of bread in a newspaper. Then he closed all the doors and windows. The path to the river dropped steeply into the valley. then rose and went round the big mountain it was frequently used by the villagers the woodcutters milkmen and mule drivers but there were no villages beyond the mountain or near the river the boy passed a woodcutter and asked him how far it was to the river The woodcutter was a short but a powerful man with a creased and weathered face and muscles that stood out in hard ugly limbs seven miles he said which was fairly accurate why do you want to know i am going to the river said the boy alone of course but it was too far it will take you 3 hours to reach the and then you have to come back it will be getting dark besides it was not an easy road but i am a good walker said the boy true he had now walked further than the mile from his house to his school The path was steep and the boy had to run most of the time. It was a dizzy winding path and he slipped one or twice. The hill was covered with lush green ferns, the trees were worn in creepers and a great wild dahlia suddenly raised its golden head. from the leaves and ferns soon the boy was in the valley and the path straightened out and rose he met a girl who was coming from the opposite direction she held a long curved knife with which she had been cutting grass 
The bangles she wore made music when she moved her hands. And it was as through the hands spoke a language of their own. How far is to the river? asked the boy. The girl had obviously never been to the river or she may have been thinking of another one because she said 20 miles without any hesitation. The boy laughed and ran down the path. A parrot suddenly screeched, flew low over his head. A flash of red and green, the bird disappeared amongst the trees. A trickle of water came from the hillside and the boy stopped to drink. The water was cold and sharp, but very refreshing. However, it seems to have the effect of making him more thirsty. The sun was striking his side of the hill, and the dusty path became hotter. The stones scorching his boy's feet. He was sure he had gone halfway. He had walked for over an hour. Presently, he saw another boy ahead of him, driving a few goats down the path. How far is the river? He asked. The boy smiled in a friendly way and said, Oh, not far, just round the next hill and straight down. The boy, feeling hungry, and wrapped his loaf of bread and broke it in halves. Offering one portion to the village boy, they sat on the hillside and ate in silence. When they have finished, they walked on together and began tacking and tacking. The boy did not notice the smarting of his feet and the heat of the sun and the distance he had covered, and the distance he had yet to cover. But after some time, his companion had to diverge along another path, and the boy was once more on his own. He missed the village boy. He could not be seen. His own home was also hidden from the view of the side of the mountain. The river was not in sight either. He began to feel discouraged. He was sorry he had finished the bread. He might want it later. He was determined to see the river. He walked on along the hot, dusty, stony path, past mud huts and rest fields until there were no more fields or huts, only forest and sun and loneliness. Now there was no man or no sign of any man influence, only trees and rocks and bramble and flowers, only silence. The silence was impressive and a little frightening. It was different from the silence of a room or street. It was the silence of space, of the unknown, the silence of God. Then as the boy rounded a sharp bend, the silence was broken to sound. The sudden roaring sound, the sound of the river. Far down in the valley, the river tumbled over rocks. The boy gasped and began to run. He slipped and stumbled, but still he can run. Then he was ankle deep in the painfully cold mountain water. And the water was blue and white and wonderful. By Ruskin Bond, 
an Indian writer.